You're in luck, actually, because my food is going to be done cooking in about 10 minutes, so that limits the length, the length of this video. So I had that great board, beautiful grain, straight all the way through. And so on one side, I have, it's going to be a blank for a paddle ball. It's going to be a blank for another paddle ball. And then I have the flat saw and center section, choo, 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 which I can get two gull wings out of with a lot of waste, unfortunately. You know, I could do different bow styles, but hey, I want to do gull wings. And that waste could probably be turned into another bow that is like two parts. I might experiment, you know, having like a, why not? Like a, a modern primitive bow with a riser, two-piece limb system, and then sinew back. Deflex reflex, that'll be tricky. In that way, I'm not gonna waste that wood. Maybe I can find a piece of walnut or cherry for the riser and create a hybrid modern antique bow. Why not? But what I do, I arrange it. When I'm looking at the growth rings on this, they're not straight when you look at them. They're not just straight like this. There's a definite orientation with curves. And so I arrange it so those curves will mimic the back of the bow would be on the outside of the tree. The inside of the curve would be the, the inside or belly of the bow. Now to, to better match it, because I don't have access now to thicker pieces, I need to glue a riser on. So I actually have it oriented. This riser came from this end. And I, I mark it. There's a, a B here. You can't see it. And a B here with arrows. And so, right there, so the grain pattern is matched. No runoff, these are wonderful. They are a little steep as far as, I'm gonna use this here, too steep, beautiful for a rawhide backed bow. Beautiful for, say, a parallel limbed bow. But for one that has great changes in widths, and I'm going to talk about the talisman that I owe somebody. It's a little too high in the in the angle for that, but I feel you could cover up a lot of differences in growth rings. I'm not going to say mistakes or errors or problems because it's not a problem. These will make nice stiff bows, and I'm going to aim for 50-55 pounds, maybe this side of 60 because this wood could support it. Take advantage of the wood you have it. But, see, this is the trick, and you're probably watching this. Um, you already bought a, an almost finished paddle bow and the finished paddle bow, and I owe you a talisman. But I don't feel comfortable making an unbacked needle tip bow with this grain orientation. I need to have it a little shallower to prevent any issues where the limbs get wide to narrow. It's just that's just the way it is. I would I would make a back talisman out of these, not an unbacked one. You have to be very conscious with the, the grain patterns there. And that's about it. As far as the gluing, do I have it? And uh let's see here. I I have enough time. Let's get things prepared. This is my planter that I use. It doesn't have the birch bark in the twig work, so I just use it for my Clamps, I will use four clamps in this endeavor. You will see me in action gluing this bow together. Doesn't matter if they're different colors. Uh, see here, I need some pads. I use wooden pads so I don't dent the wood, although I could dent it and it wouldn't be any problem because I'm going to be removing a lot of it and it's probably not in an area that would be on the bow, but I'm going to be prepared here. So here we go. The first part is I want to make sure that I've got decent Gorilla glue here. It's been sitting for a while. I like this Gorilla glue because oh Yeah, that'll work. It's beautiful. I'm not gonna bother squeezing it out that little tip, but are you ready? I'm going to you have to wet it because this stuff is activated by the water It's an interesting kind of a glue Okay on the board. It's wet move this thing so I can do that without plunking. The B, B, A, A. Okay, so I've got the right bows. I'm going to now smear 
Gorilla like glue on this wood. And there's no use being chintzy here. I want to make sure that I've got enough glue here and the excess will squeeze out and I'm just going to like distribute it oh so gracefully through here. Nothing worse than getting ready to glue and you don't have enough glue. I'm going to take some more. It's fun stuff. I love how it foams. Now when I was in my dog sled building period of life, kick sleds and stuff like that, if I had to fill like a screw hole, you drill it and then you countersink the screw in there and you got this plug to fill, sometimes I would just take sawdust, mix it with this Gorilla glue, and then the trick is, in that hole that you want to fill, is you put aluminum foil over it, something that doesn't stick, then you put a piece of wood over it, and then you clamp it down, and so that Gorilla glue, when it foams, it's under pressure. If it just is allowed to foam up, it's gonna be weak, but when this is under pressure, when you clamp it down, it makes a very hard, hard plug. Okay, so you stick it there carefully. As careful as I can get it. Owing to, I haven't had my second cup of coffee yet. And then it's a matter of clamping. And it'll slide around a little bit. And so I, you notice I don't put the pad, I don't put a pad to protect on the riser because that's all going to be gone. I'm going to do a little crisscross pattern. This is not neither here nor there. It doesn't matter the order you do it. But this just makes it because that high, or yeah, high glue, that Gorilla glue is a little slippery. So I tighten it a little bit down at a time. Wiggle these things around so it's not going to like make it slide off into oblivion. Take the magical orange clamp. I just happen to have an orange clamp. These things appear that they were set for another paddle ball. There we go. Number four. See, this is highly complex. And I'll say it again, I feel lucky that whatever red oak producing lumber yard and kiln operation that supplies their local home depot, I'm lucky that they know how to operate a kiln because if you get somebody that's a little aggressive on the kiln protocol, it can ruin the wood. That's how, or that's why rather you see, I'm gonna buy a board and I'm gonna cut it into smaller boards you start getting wangs and weird things, binds on the blade. It's because they were too aggressive on it when they were heating it up. And they literally, just like steel, they case hardened it. So on the outside of the board, it's extremely hard. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four clamps. If I had a fifth one, I'd put it right in the center there. But, you know, these, these are flat. They'll be fine. But I will demonstrate it wind up taking it off. Number five, dead center. That's it. And I did a video, what was it, yesterday or the day before? It appears that I have, am now the, the owner of a broken frog. Something wrong with the swim bladder, he's still kind of swollen. So I guess what I'm going to do with Ferdinand the Frog is uh, build a decent enclosure. Nice little ramp from be up on her, or her, I didn't really look into You can tell female and male frogs by uh, how that, that gland connects to their eye. They haven't studied them that far there. Get some crickets and uh, hopefully by spring the frog will heal. Could be frost damage. It's been frosty lately. That's the story of the frog. That's all. Step one. Looking good. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. That is today's treatise on bows.